while you were sleeping ep 1 part 1 inch. Episode 1 Recap On a snowy night in Seoul, time seems to flow backwards. Cars and people move in reverse, and snow falls up into the sky. A woman with a scratch on her face sees a man walking toward her, blood streaming down his face. She runs into his arms, dropping a hair tie in the process, and says, I believe you. Because I'm me, I can believe you. As they embrace, time stands still and and then everything begins to move in reverse again. The same young woman, Nam Hong Ju, Susie, wakes up from what must have been a dream, looking very different with longer hair. She writes down what she remembers, muttering at how absurd it was, as mom comes in and nags her about her pig's tie the room. Hongju says she hugged a stranger in her dream, which is crazy because she's not the type to throw herself at men. Mom agrees that she shouldn't, not looking like that anyway. Mom wants to know if the stranger was handsome, but Hongju reminds her that she has a boyfriend. Hongju barks that this one will not end and then freezes at the sight of dream guy standing across the street from her house. Mom heard that they'd be getting new neighbors, and wonders if the two handsome boys are brothers. They are brothers, in fact, and little bro shoves a rice cake into his Hyung's hands. Hongju's dream guy, Yong Jae Chan, Lee Jong Sok, pouts at his little brother's insistence that they pass out rice cakes to their new neighbors, calling it old fashioned. Hongju panics when Jae Chan heads straight for their house, and tells mom that he's the guy she hugged in her dream. Jae Chan puts on his nicest smile for the intercom as he rings the doorbell, only to be met with Hongju's cold reply for him to leave and never come back. He's stunned at the rejection and yells over at his brother for making him do this. Little bro just guesses that he didn't smile. Jay Chan swears up and down that he smiled, and little bro decides that if the girl is that rude, Jay Chan should date her because they're a perfect match. Sometime later, Hongju sits at the bus stop while complaining to mom over the phone for taking the car, and then panics again to see Jay Chan walking in her direction. She's so engrossed in her plan to avoid him and appear disinterested that she ignores the schoolgirls who ask her to move aside so they can sit on the bench. Jay Chan happens to sit in the seat right next to hers when there are plenty of others available, so she moves one seat over, and he follows suit. She does it one more time just to be sure, and he scoots over again to be next to her. So she's suddenly convinced that he's trying to seduce her. She stands up to give him a piece of her mind and blurts, I'm not interested in you. At the exact same time that he stands up and tells the schoolgirls that they can sit together now. So embarrassing. The schoolgirls snigger at her. And Hongju is so mortified that she gets on the wrong bus and just stays on one that happens to be plastered with a giant ad for has just not that into you. Hongju tells mom about it that night at their Sam Jepsil restaurant, convinced that Jay Chan has fallen for her. When a customer comes up to the counter to pay, Hongju is distracted by the sight of familiar objects the man's lighter, the bandage on his finger. And even his face, which we see in a flashback to a dream. Hongju says that she dreamt about that man lighting a cigarette on a snowy night with that bandage on his finger, and the moment he did, he caught on fire. Mom takes her seriously right away and runs out to stop the man at his car. 
Hongju shouts through the window, a jishi, will die if you smoke that. But of course he doesn't understand just how literally she means it. He pushes them into the street and drives off, and mom shows Hongju the lighter she stole from him in the tassel, hoping that it'll change things. Hongju is more cynical and says it won't, it's no use. It's all his choice and his fate. Mom argues that if you know, you have to change things. But at that moment, snow starts to come down, just like in Hanju's dream. Hanju, you can't change it. Who would believe such crazy talk? Hanju continues in voiceover as we watch the cigarette man find a second identical lighter in his car before stopping for gas, that I saw you in my dream. That my dreams always come true, so if you want to live, you have to listen to me how would anyone believe such nonsense? Even dad couldn't believe it and went like that. You can't change the future. Knowing doesn't change it. And just like Hongju says, as if it were predetermined. The man lights a cigarette and ignites the leaking gas all around him, sending his car and the entire gas station up in flames. In the morning, a group of staff workers from the prosecutor's office swoon at a picture of the handsome new prosecutor arriving today, who happens to be J. Chan. Her former boss, prosecutor turned lawyer Liu Bum, Li Sanyub feigns jealousy over her shifting loyalty, but then pays her tab. He says that he should congratulate Jay Chan on his first day too, and they're surprised to hear that Yubum was Jay Chan's tutor when he was young. Hyang Mi thinks Jay Chan looks too smart to need a tutor, but Yubum says he was always in last place in school. In flashback, we see little Jay Chan proudly read Justice as Just Heiss, to the horror of his tutor. The story is a bit disheartening to Hayami, whose co-workers worry that she's in for a tough time with a new boss who's not the sharpest tool in the shed. She says optimistically that he's still a prosecutor, so how bad could he be? Cut to. J. Chan posing for a series of selfies in the hallway with his new ID tag, like his 15 and on a field trip to the prosecutor's office. They cringe, and when Yu Bum calls out to him, J. Chan recognizes him right away and calls him Hyung. J. Chan gets introduced to his team's lead investigator, Chief Choi, who dutifully tends to Yu Bum's code out of habit. Yu Bum says he came to congratulate him on becoming a prosecutor, except he makes sure to refer to Jay Chan as a snot-nosed kid. HRM, looks like you're here for your ego. Yu Bum offers his help with anything he needs, calling it a win-win, but Jay Chan doesn't seem eager to take him up on it. As Yu Bum answers a call. He mindlessly rips and rolls up tiny bits of paper, which Jay Chan clocks with interest. It takes him back to his youth, when Yu Bum had done the same thing while teaching him the meaning of win win. Yu Bum had said that Jay Chan's father offered him bonuses for every time Jay Chan raised his rank in school, and he hatched a scheme to forge Jay Chan's report cards and split the money. Little Jay Chan had scoffed that his father, a cop, would throw them in jail if he found them out. Said that Jay Chan would get his bike and his father would be happy about his grades, calling it a win-win. Hongju has another dream, in which she wakes up in the hospital near Christmas time. She holds a letter in her hand from her mother a list of things to do in the event of her death including bank accounts and insurance policies. Oh no! 
she asks the woman by her bedside her if mom passed away because of the accident she caused, and she begs to be told that this is a dream. She wakes in tears, and continues to sob as she writes down the details of her dream, and, long hair, mom's will, because of an accident I caused and mom and. Mom notices her swollen eyes when she comes out of her room, but Hongju lies that she just ate ramen last night. Just then, a news report shows the cigarette man from her dream dying in a gas station fire.